Okay, so it is called the parent functions and transformations. All right, so the first thing I'm going to show you is the parent functions, which you guys already know, or at least should know. So just so you know, the definition of a parent function is the simplest of whoops, the functions in a family before any translations. Okay, so before there's any translations means before there's any adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Okay, so if you take all of that away, you're left with the parent function. Okay, let's start with the first simplest parent function, x. What does x look like if you're going to graph it? It's what? Just the x-axis. Oh, it's not just the x-axis, actually. It has a slope of 1. For some reason, that's like one of the most confusing functions. So it has a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1, so it looks like that. So the right end is going to infinity, the left end is going to negative infinity. Straight line. We remember that one, yes? Okay, what about uh, x squared? What does x squared look like? A parabola, right? It's a parabola. The vertex goes right through the origin. The right hand goes to infinity, and the left end goes to positive infinity. Both ends go up. That's pretty easy. Juniors with last names L through Z, please report to the auditorium to have your takes or if you have not had your picture taken. Juniors last names L through Z. Thank you. So what does X cube look like? John Travolta goes right through the origin. His right arm goes up. And his left arm goes, whoa, that was really badly drawn. I must redraw it. There we go. Okay, so right arm is up, left arm is down. Okay, what if I keep going with this and go x to the fourth? What does x to the fourth look like? Parabola, right? Okay, so do you guys remember that anything that has an even exponent is a parabola. It's just steeper. So if you compared x to the fourth to x to the square, they would almost look exactly the same, but in the end, so like the further out you would go, one would be steeper. It, it does look a little bit more flat when you get close to the origin. Yeah, so it kind of looks more like boxy-ish instead of curvy-ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe give yourself a note that anything that's even up. looks like a same, same direction. Yes, end behavior equals same direction. <coughs> okay, and then we could say anything with an odd exponent like we saw in the warm-up today, was an x to the fifth. Looks like a John Travolta. There's a, some, yeah, well, steeper wiggle, yeah. Okay, so in an odd function, as long as it's positive, right, the right end goes to positive infinity, left end goes to negative infinity. Okay, so they look like John Travolta's. Okay, uh, there's a couple more parent functions. You guys know of any other ones? 
you should. How about this one? The absolute value of x. What does that look like? Come on, you're all thinking it, just say it out loud. A V, thank you. Good, so it's a straight line, but it makes a V. Okay, so notice that it is not a parabola, but it has straight lines, it's not a straight line. It's a V. Okay, so both ends are going up. <coughs> okay, this one might be a new one to you. Does anybody know what the square root of x looks like? Ah. <coughs> anybody? It's like half a parabola. Yeah, it's like half a parabola that's been turned on a side. Right. Yeah. So it goes, it starts at the origin and goes up and to the right. Okay, so it's technically half of a parabola, only the top half, and keeps continuing upwards. Okay, so an interesting fact about um, the square root of x, what's the left end doing? Right, so technically there's no left end. Okay, so it's only got a right end, it's going to positive infinity. So this function technically has a starting point and can you, continues up and to the right. Okay, um, the other one you may see is 1 over x. Okay, so um, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do when you start dealing with fractions and that, and that will be a whole different section on its own. So they'll keep this one quite simple. Does anybody remember what 1 over x looks like? <coughs> okay, so this technically looks like, I call this the hourglass. Because if you kind of look, tilt your head a little bit, it kind of see an hourglass. It doesn't have a name specifically. Is that like so there are two asymptotes. There is a vertical asymptote that exists right at the y-axis, which is at x equals 0, because <coughs> one value that x cannot be would be 0. You can't divide by 0. And then there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay, so that's the case. We talked about horizontal asymptotes in the last case, or in the last section. It is a bigger on bottom case, so it goes to 0. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these parent functions and we're going to do some translations with them. So we're going to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and see what happens with those graphs. Okay, um, so let's do, let's start it off, um, so let's do translations. So I'm just going to do some examples and then we'll go over what they look like. Um, let's say we have x squared plus 4. Okay, so for example, if I add 4 at the end of any function, what direction is it going to take the function? Up. Okay, so adding 4 at the end is going to go up. Okay, so a quick sketch of this. I go up 4 units. I know I have x squared, so it looks like... A parabola, the bottom of that V, or not V, U, goes right through that 4. That's easy, right? Okay, so the next one you'll probably see is, of course, the opposite of up. So how would you go down? Down. So um, let's say we have a cubic down 5. What's my function? Cubic down 5. X cubed minus 5. Perfect. Okay, so I would go down 5 units. Okay, I John Travolta. I have a right arm that's up. It's going to do my little wiggle right at negative 5. Okay. Um, here, let's just write that so it's in the notes down. 
Okay. Um, we can also go left and right. So let's say... Let's say I'm going to take an absolute value function and I'm going to shift it to the right two units. How do you shift something to the right? Okay, so where is the minus two? Is it inside or is it on outside? It's inside. Okay, so to go left and right, it has to be inside either parentheses or in our case, this one happens to be absolutely absolute value, which kind of acts like parentheses. Okay, so this is going to go to the right. Notice that it is opposite of kind of what you would generally think. It's a minus. Okay, um, so then how would you go to the left? Let's say we take, uh, let's go back to the parabola. How would you get a parabola? Let's do, whoops, oh my gosh, I can't even read. F of X. Um, let's do an X. Let's do a cortic. Cortic to the left, four. Okay, so is it plus or minus? Plus four. Plus four. Good. So plus four in parentheses to go left. And I said cortic, so you got to go to the fourth degree. So one, two, three, four. We got a parabola moving in that direction. Both arms are up. Pretty easy so far? Okay, so often you see something like this. So let's say you have the square root of x plus 3 minus 4. Okay, what is this one going to look like? First of all, tell me what my two translations are. Okay, so we got down four, inside goes left three, good. What does this look like? A line. A line. <laughs> Very descriptive, thank you. <laughs> okay, so that. Well, it's. What do you mean? Say that again. Right from the origin. So would that just be the they start at yeah. Is that what you're saying? Like so, I would call that point kind of like the vertex. So usually the vertex is the bottom of the parabola. John Travolta technically doesn't have a vertex, but it has like a, um, you know, that place where it does its wiggling at. Okay, so it's its point of reference. For the square root, it's it's the starting point is what it is. Okay. So everybody good with up, down, left, rights? Those are pretty easy, right? Okay. Um, let's do multiplication. Um, number six. Let's keep it nice and simple at first. Let's say you have uh, 3x squared minus 1. Okay, so technically I have two translations here. What are the two translations? Okay, good. Very good. So I have a down one. That's my movement. Okay, the three is affecting the slope. Okay, so that's really a good word to use to describe it. But do remember, if I say I have a slope of three and I have a parabola, I can't say that the slope of the whole parabola is just three because... Slope is really a constant term, meaning the function always has a slope of 3, right? Okay, but what we can say is that when I graph this at down 1, the slope exists one unit away from wherever that vertex point is. Okay, so I can draw the slope of 3, so I can go up 3 and to the right 1. So 1, 2, 3. And that's going to basically give me a reference point that I can then reflect, remember I'm drawing a parabola, and notice that now I have a parabola that is skinnier. Um, so then it would go to 9, so from there it would be 3, 9, so it's multiples of 3, 3, 9, 27. 
really steep after that. <laughs> yeah. So you don't really need to be that accurate. I would say as long as you're one or two units away from the vertex, you should be at least that accurate. Okay. So do I need to do more examples with multiplication? Like what if, what if we did a different function? Should I do one more? Um, let's see. How about... How about the square root? Let's do uh, four square roots of x plus two. Okay, because this one's kind of an interesting function in itself. It's a little bit different than the other ones. So what are my two translations here? So left two, left, and a slope of four. Okay, so when I draw this, I'm going to have my starting point go to the left 2. Okay, for my next point, I'm going to go up 4 and over 1. Okay, and then remembering that I'm drawing that sideways parabola, just kind of going up, and then it's going to level off. Okay, so it's just going to kind of pull that parabola up higher. Okay. So let's keep that in mind. Let's do the same thing. So let's say I just multiplied. The opposite of multiplication would be dividing. Okay, so the nice thing about dividing is really dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So I can say that dividing would be something like, um, let's do a cubic, one fourth x cubed plus 2. Okay, so this is B dividing, right? Okay, so what are my two translations on this? Two up, and then my slope change is now 1 fourth. Okay, so what is really going to happen if I have a slope of 1 fourth? Up 1 over 4. So... My, my John Travolta is just going to become really wide. And, and remember that you're using this idea of a John Travolta. It's going to go up in the right, but then down on the left. So if I went one on the to the left direction, I would go to the left four, but I would go down one, right? So it's going to look... Kind of like that. So like a really wide John Travolta. Please excuse the interruption. Sophomores with last names A through K. If you need retakes, please report to the auditorium. Or if you have not had the video <coughs> taken, sophomores with last names A through K. Thank you. Okay. So the last thing that the, they do is reflections. Do you guys remember how reflections play? <laughs> so, like, how do you flip something over the x-axis? That's always the easy one to remember. So, how do you flip something upside down? The negative, okay? So, this is where, if there's negatives involved, those flip. Okay, there's two ways that you can flip. And I'm going to use, um, let's use the V, I think, because that's the most, out. well... Maybe it's not the most obvious. Let's just do a negative out front. So let's have a negative um, x plus 3 minus 2. Okay, so I'm not going to say or write this down, but what are my two translations? Excuse me, 3. Down to which over? Left. So left 3. And then a negative is just basically going to flip it upside down. Okay, so if I know I'm drawing a V, because it's absolute value, I'm just going to draw upside down V. Okay, so I can go down to left 3. Oops, that was 4, sorry. Okay, and technically what's my slope of my V? To become pretty accurate. Yeah, it's a 1. Okay, so I can be like, oh, I go down 1 to the right 1 in both directions and draw V. Okay, so that's pretty accurate. OK, 
Okay, now the other way that a negative can exist, just like when you're adding and subtracting, is if the negative is on the inside of the parentheses. Okay, so let me show you what happens on the inside of the parentheses. Okay, so let's say, um, let's do a John Travolta. So negative x cubed. Um, I'm going to add plus 1. Oh, sorry. I wrote that wrong. Wrote my exponent too soon. Excuse me. And let's go up. 3. There we go. Because if I would have kept my exponent inside, that would have been an up and down movement, right? That would have been silly. Okay, so we got a John Travolta. I've got three things happening here. What are the three things? It is up three. It's not actually to the left one. It is actually to the right one. Okay, so this is what happens when you have a negative inside the parentheses. And this is probably the most complicated of all of the translations that you see. Okay, if you have a negative inside the, the parentheses, it causes the function to reflect over the y-axis. Okay, technically on the outside, this one reflected over the x-axis. Okay, but since the, the negative is happening inside of the parentheses, it's going to reflect and then move. Okay, so since I have a reflection or a translation of plus one that's normally goes to the left one, it's going to flip over the y-axis. So instead of going to the left, it's actually going to go to the right. Okay, so it's going to go up three and to the right. Okay, now think about this before you draw it. Remember John Travolta has his right arm up, and he's reflected over the y-axis. Now what does he look like? Left hand, Left hand is now up. See how that works? Okay, so the negative caused the whole function to flip over the y-axis. So this hand flips. So we get with those. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, hold on. I got one other function for you. They're going to throw this um, function. I'm going to do this in black because it's not generally a parent function, but they're going to give it to you. Um, okay, so this is new to you, I assume. And it is, well, it's like one bracket with like a line in it. So like if I zoomed in, it would look like this. That's a pretty good drawing of that. Okay, so what that stands for is it's called um, greatest integer. This little brackety weird thing. Okay, and the way greatest integer works is basically any number is rounded to the integer that's just less than it. Okay, so for example, if my number is 4.567, you round down to 4. Okay, so integer meaning a whole number. Okay, if it was 4.999999, you would round to... Four. If it was 10.99999, you would round down to 10. If it's negative 5.99999, you round down to 5. Ooh, that's a tough one. Let's say that again. Negative 5.999 rounds down to six. negative 6. <coughs> Negative six. Think of the number line. 
the integer less than negative 5 is negative 6. That's a trick question. All right. So if you're going to graph this function, it looks like this. So here's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to draw it in a different color so you can see it. What does this look like what I'm drawing? Yeah. Yeah, it's called a step function. Okay, because it looks like stairs, literally. Okay, so notice that this step function, what does it cross through? What point is always really easy to use as a reference point when you're doing translations? Zero. Goes through zero, zero. So notice that first step goes through zero, zero. Okay, so if I asked you to translate this function and do x plus 2 minus 4, what are my two translations? Down 4, left 2. Okay, so that gives you that point. So down 4, left 2. So that's first point, and remember you go one unit to the right. And then you step. <coughs> so it looks something like that. And technically it would go down 2 to be super accurate. Interesting, right? Okay. Wait, where was your first one? Um, I'll start with red right here. That was my first spot. Down four, left two. All right, so this is what I want to do. Uh, <coughs> we're going to do a near pod and do a couple.